Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy New Year's, everybody. It's such an exciting holiday. Even when I was a little kid, I thought it was exciting because it seems like you're kind of traveling into the future. You're, you're closing the chapter of, uh, you're closing one chapter of our life, and we get to open up a new one. 2024 is coming, it's knocking at the door. I wonder what it's going to bring. We know what old chapters have brought. There was that one chapter where you were born, you probably don't remember it, and there was that chapter where you got to grow up and experience all sorts of new things. And there was also, I apologize for this, that chapter where we all had to stay inside, and I think the title of that chapter might have been COVID or pandemic. There's all sorts of chapters in our life, and we have to ask ourselves, what is this new one going to bring? Now, normally we can't skip ahead, right? You can't read through what the future holds. We don't have that power, but what if I told you today that right here I had pages written of your life And you could come up and you could grab it and you could read through everything that's going to happen to you in 2024. Do you think you'd come on up and grab it? Would you read? Yeah. Would you read through it? Would you want to know what 2024 holds? I don't know the answer to that. I think for myself, probably not. I mean, you'd get to see all the great blessings that 2024 is going to bring, but you'd also get to see the hardships the challenges, the stuff that maybe we don't want to experience. Because whether we like it or not, those things are going to come. Something many of you might not know about me, and this is sort of a confession to you all, I'm a worrier. I know I shouldn't be. The guy standing up here shouldn't worry, right? Trust in God. It's what we should all do. And I try my best each and every day not to worry, but I do. I worry about the unknown. I even worry about the known. For instance, let's get this on. For instance, uh, I'm needle phobic. I am petrified when it comes to needles. So a while back, I had to have images taken of my shoulder. And the doctor said, well, it's no big deal. We'll just take a needle and we'll stick it in your shoulder and they'll inject something and you'll be fine. Well, you can bet that I was petrified. I was a ball of nerves. The weeks building up to this experience was just filled with fear. In my mind of this unknown thing, that needle just kept getting longer. The pain was unimaginable in my mind. I was so anxious, so worried of something I couldn't change. Then the day finally came, and you know what happened? It was just as bad as I had imagined, (laughs) if not worse. The needle was wiggling around. It took forever. It was awful. I was on a metal bed, sweating, about to pass out. I hated every second of it. But you know what I realized after the fact? Is that although the known was terrible, what had I really done for myself? I prolonged the pain of one day over weeks. I'd made myself suffer about the unknown and the known. I made myself suffer longer than I needed to. Sometimes both the unknown and the known are hard. We don't want to deal with them. And unfortunately, I think the same is true for our lives. We prolong the fear. We prolong the worry and the anxiety. Not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. Is it going to have challenges? Is there going to be hurdles? I'm so nervous about it. And then when they finally do come, I'm nervous that I'm not going to make it through the next one or the next one. Or the next difficulty. Guys, I I wish I could tell you 2024 was going to be perfect. I wish I could stand up here and tell you that your 2024 is going to be absolutely ideal. You're going to get every blessing you ever wanted this year. And you're not going to have any challenges. Everything is going to go right. But I can't. I can't promise any of that because we still live in a sinful world. We still live in a broken world. People still have sin. That's the, we still have sin. All of that still affects all of us. 2024 is going to have challenges. So the question we need to ask ourselves isn't so much, is 2024 going to be the perfect year? And more, 
How are we going to decide to face 2024 and everything that it brings? In our epistle reading for today, I think Paul is kind of addressing this very idea. You see, he's talking to the believers in Rome, and, and at this time, being a Christian in Rome wasn't exactly an easy road. There was persecution. See, the Roman Empire was not one that wanted one God. It was so big, they decided, let's take all the gods. Let's worship to all of them, each one giving us something different. So you can bet they weren't exactly uh, too keen on the idea of a religion that says there's only one and all the other ones are bad. In fact, they're not even real. Being a Christian came with hardships. And those hardships is what Paul is dealing with here. I'm going to kind of skip around a little bit. I'm sorry for that. But we've got to ask these questions. In his, uh, in his words, in his rhetoric, Paul says, who can be against us? Who is it? Who can separate us from God? He's talking to a people who are dealing with hardships, and I think that's a question we have to ask ourselves today as well. Who can be against us? Who can separate us from the light of the world? What's going to happen today? I mean, you all faced ice and and harsh weather to get here, and you'll face it to go home. What's going to happen when you get home? What's going to happen tomorrow or next month or or all the way into 2024? What is it going to bring? What challenge is going to come along that can separate us from God? Now I know we're all here in church and we know the answer to that. Well, it's nothing, but we're all so sinful. And challenges can be hard. And when those challenges come, don't we sometimes ask, God, what else is going to happen? I don't know if you're still here caring for me. What's going to come along and blot out your light from my life? I feel so alone. Take Paul's life, for example. He could have been asking this very same question. You want to talk about a hard life? He could have been asking, man, that next harsh boat ride to the next prison, that's going to be it. I I don't know if I can do it anymore. Or that next cold, damp prison cell with no food, that's going to be it. I don't know if I can follow God anymore because clearly he's not here. Or maybe it's that next disgruntled guard who hits Paul and he says, you know what, I'm done, I can't handle it anymore. God, clearly there was something that could separate me from your love and this was it. Now I really hope that your 2024 doesn't look like boats traveling to the next prison cell. But what's the challenge going to be for your life? What's the next thing that's going to come along that's going to make you ask, God, are you really still here? Is your light still in my life? One more health problem. I just, I don't know if I can handle it anymore. One more financial burden and and it just, it's too much. I don't know if I can keep living a life of faith. And once again, I got to apologize for even putting this thought in your head, but one more pandemic that sees me locked up for more than a year and I just... I don't know if I can handle it anymore. What is it? What can separate us from God? Known or unknown, burdens are burdens. And they're hard to handle and they're going to continue to come. And and what is it that God can't reach his hand through and reach me in the troubles and in the darkness? Dear friends, the answer to that question is that there's nothing. There is nothing that God can't reach you through. He can reach into any of that and be a light in your life. In fact, he already has. You see, Paul, in his question, he he sets it up so we know it's not even a fair question to ask. Paul says this. uh, He says, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? You see, God is for us. And that's such a great thing because not only does it mean that God is is on our side, but he's not just sitting in the bleachers rooting you on in your life with a flag. You see, God went before us. He went before us to deal with all the challenges, anything that had any semblance of power in our lives to separate us from him. He's taken us back. He's taken the care to make sure that we are his in faith. You see, there's no unknown challenge to God. He's the author of that book I told you about, the book of your life. Before you drew a single breath, 
He authored the whole thing, start to finish. And then he went through it and he highlighted every challenge you would have, anything that could separate you from him. And he plugged in the solution. And the solution is Christ. Dear friends, the answer has already been given. There is no challenge too great for our God. Paul writes, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? See, another way of saying that is, what is God willing to stop at for you? What's the line in the sand for you that God says, you know what, I love you, but this is just a little bit too far? What is the hurdle in your life that God looks at and he says, man, that's just a little bit too scary. I guess they're too far gone. Are you seeing how silly these questions seem? They are silly because there is no line in the sand. God has no spot where he says, you're too far gone. There is nothing too great for him because of what Christ has done. You see, in Jesus, he conquered death, and in that, he conquered your death. In his new life, he gives you everlasting life. Jesus sits on the holy throne, reigning over everything, every challenge, every blessing, everything you will face, ready to lead you forward. We can face everything with confidence because we know Jesus has already gone forward and dealt with it on our behalf. You see, Jesus already beat sin, death, and the devil. And there is no challenge greater than those three. Dear friends, if this isn't enough for you, I, I wish I had the time. I would sit up here with a whiteboard and I would take down every challenge, every issue that you have in your life. And I would take it point by point and let you shout them out. Man, I got financial problems. Or, or there's, there's people in my life that, that are just, they're so mean to me and I don't know if I can handle that or or whatever it is, and I would make this long list. And then I'd go to this top and I'd say, is this one greater than Jesus? And I hope that all of you would say no. And then I'd go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and we could spend hours going through it because nothing is greater than Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns over everything. I said earlier that having the ability to see the future would be kind of a rough thing, right? I said it maybe wouldn't be such a blessing. In fact, it'd be more of a curse. But I think that's only a partial truth. Yeah, having, having the ability to see the future would be tough in the fact that you'd see all the hurdles. And it would make us anxious because even as Christians, and we know that Jesus is stronger than all the challenges, they're still hard to deal with in the moment, aren't they? They still hurt when they come. And we would worry but we do have a little bit of ability to see the future. Even though you can't see the next chapters, friends, we can see the very last chapter in our life. We can see that Jesus has blown open the tomb for us. We can see everlasting, excuse me, everlasting life. We can see internal life with Jesus in his kingdom. We can see receiving our inheritance from our loving God from a life lived in him. Our last chapter has been rewritten when Jesus came into this world. No longer was it a bad chapter that sees an end. No, the end of our book is actually a beginning. A beginning to live in eternity and perfection and wholeness with a loving God who has stopped at nothing, defeating all the challenges and the hurdles to make sure that we would be him with him forever. Because of that, we can face every challenge, even the unknown ones. Because we know the final outcome is still God loving us forever and receiving all that he has to offer. Now usually at this point in the sermon I like to give you guys a, a real life example of what it looks like to live with whatever it is we're talking about. But as I thought, I thought, you know, maybe I don't want to give you one story. I want to give you a whole lot of stories. And don't worry, it's not like my sermon's going to go for a half an hour longer. Instead, I want to give you my experience in other people's stories. In my short time in the ministry, I've gotten to meet some incredible people. In fact, all of you here, I've gotten to meet, and it's fair to say you're all incredible people. But as I've gotten to meet incredible people, I've gotten to be with them in incredible situations, baptisms, marriage, the blessed times in life. 
And I've also gotten to be there in some of the hardest times, in some of the bleakest challenges. And you know what struck me in all those cases? That as Christians, they were able to face all of those bleak moments with hope. What very well could have seemed like the very end, God is no longer here, the light of the life isn't in my world anymore. In all those moments, they were able to face it with hope because they knew that no matter how big the challenge, no challenge is bigger than God. No challenge is too great to divide us from a loving God who has done everything for us. They faced everything, everything with hope. You see, as Christians, we rejoice with hope. As Christians, we struggle with hope. We mourn and we grieve with hope. We even face down death fiercely with hope because we know that God has conquered all those things and as his children, we are children of hope. Let's make 2024 a time of hope. 2023 is almost gone and the new year is knocking. It's time to close the last page of this chapter and open up to the new one. And as you do that, I encourage you to remember the author of your story, the author of this new chapter is the very same God who sacrificed everything to make sure that you were redeemed and saved and nothing could separate you from his love. Face down every challenge with the knowledge that you are already the victor over it because Christ is the victor and he has given you that victory. Let us all count down tonight, the new year, fiercely, courageously, hopefully, ready for whatever it might bring, knowing that regardless of what it is, challenge or blessing, we can face it all beside the one who has already faced it on our behalf. Amen.